Okay. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good, Douglas. Thank you so much for having me today. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Uh, As we were just talking about before we got on, I've got two dogs. How many do you have? Well, I've got three of my own. I have a a young German Shepherd, and then I have two 16-year-old dogs, elderly pups, uh, a rat terrier, and a border collie pit bull mix. So I have an unusual little menagerie here, and I also live with dogs who I train at my suburban Chicago location, my little farm. So uh, uh, it's an ever-changing cast of students also that live with me. Okay, so that that is your occupation then, yeah? Dog trainer? Betcha. Oh, okay. Um, and you've also written a book called The Art of Training Your Dog, How to Gently I Teach just it. happen to have a copy of it here. To oh, fl- well, let's see it. To yeah, sure. It, to fl- well, sorry, I'm going to get the green screen effect plus mirror imaging, but it's called The Art of Training Your Dog, and naturally it has a uh, okay. a German Shepherd on the cover because I, I co-authored it with the monks of New Skeet, who are very well known for breeding German Shepherds and training dogs of all breeds and writing best-selling books. You mentioned that you had a couple of dogs that are 16 years old. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. German Shepherds don't live that long, do they? Well, you know, um, as an aside, they used to. Um, the, the genetics have changed, and also to a certain extent, I feel like the, 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 the veterinary care has gotten better, by the way, but I, on some level, food has gotten a bit worse over the years. So it's very hard to navigate nutritional the nutritional needs of a dog now. You'd think it'd be easy with all the stuff out there on the market, but it's a little bit confusing, I think. And um, German Shepherds used to live 14, 16 years. Um, I think, in fact, most dogs did. Most dogs maybe lived even longer. But then again, remember, we were doing unhealthy things for them, such as giving them human food leftovers, unhealthy things. So yeah. there's a lot to know about dogs and nutrition. Uh, and I would, I would encourage your readers to, or your listeners to really you know, do their research in that area it is a controversial area. But the better you feed your dog, the longer in, in general your dog will live and the healthier she'll be. Well, because I was reading about I've got two, like I said, I've got a German Shepherd, then I've got a mix. I think they call him a pushy, mm-hmm. half poodle and half Shih Tzu. Oh, wow. That's an opinionated little dog, I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. And but I was reading that the pushy can live 16, 17 years easily. But the German Shepherds, the average is only 10. Well, there's a um, there's a phenomenon, uh, a genetic phenomenon known as hybrid vigor, first of all. And when you have a wider gene pool, you tend to have more resistance to genetic diseases. Now, I better state right up front, my mother did not send me to medical school, guys. <laughs> so I'm giving you, <laughs> okay. um, you, you know, the benefit right. of 50 years in the dog, dog, dog care, dog training industry. But I, I, I know I'm not the world's expert here. However, hybrid vigor does help in giving resistance to genetic disease. And um, but yeah, losing a German Shepherd at 10 is tragic. That's that's not nearly old enough. I, I know that the, the monks had their their stud dog, their last couple stud dogs who passed away um, were in the 14 and 15 uh, range. So if okay. you really focus on the genetics and if you focus on the nutrition, you can get more life out of these guys. And, and, and I hope we all do. All right. Well, great. Well, let's talk a little bit about your book. Yeah. Um, I was reading through what you were talking about with the e-collar. Mm-hmm. Now, the e-collar is not the old electric shock collars. Is that oh, heavens, correct? No. Right. Well, so, for, you know, for your for your let me just grab a copy so I can read it directly for you guys. The, the, the title of the book is The Art of Training Your Dog. And at some point later, if, you're, if your viewers would like to go to theartoftrainingyourdog.com, there is more information there. But the subtitle of this book we think is critical. The subtitle is How to Gently Teach Good Behavior Using an E-Collar. E-Collar is an electronic collar. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people think that that means shock collar. And right. um, so one of the first things that we do in this book is to talk about what's the difference, because there's a huge difference between what we would classify as a shock collar and I think what you could legitimately call an e-collar. And um, I don't want to get lost in the technology of it here now unless you want a lot of detail there. But I will say there are an awful lot of um, collars on the market that are not good enough for your dog. They are certainly not good enough for my dogs or my student dogs. 
Uh, and it's not just price, but generally speaking, those collars can be identified in part by price, $29, $39. They're all over the internet. And um, you cannot be elegant with those. It, it, you cannot train in a subtle artistic manner with cheap junky collars like that. But that being said, there is a type of collar that is legitimately an e-collar. The companies who use them spent millions of dollars to develop the sensations that they deliver. And they would be comparable much more to a TENS unit that you might get put on you at a, at a physical therapist or a doctor to therapeutically um, work the muscles a little bit. Electronic um, tingle. It's, it's much more like that. It doesn't really even resemble, you know, when you separate nylons or, a, or a blankets in the dryer and you get that zap, it, it's not that. It, it's not that at all. It's nothing like that. That's really unpleasant. <laughs> so it, it's, um, there's a lot to know about this. And that's why in, um, in the book, we walk people very carefully through like the controversy, what it's about, why it exists, and then most importantly of all, how to select a really terrific collar that is capable of giving your dog a sensation that feels a lot like this. Excuse me, I want to talk to you. So that's what we're <laughs> after. All right, give us an example of an application with the collar. Okay, so you put the collar on, now you're gonna train your dog to do what? Right, well, um, Douglas, most people come to the monks boarding school. We both, the monks and myself, we do boarding school for dogs. You drop your dog off here and uh, you know, we train them and then teach you how to keep them trained. Although um, we spent so long developing this method that we decided to write the book to help people learn how to do it themselves because not everybody can afford um, boarding school and not everybody wants to drop their dog off any place for a couple few weeks. So um, the, the vast majority of people come to us with a list of, would you please make my dog stop? doing and then there's a long list you know pulling on the leash barking out the windows digging in the garden jumping on guests running away from home i mean it, you know it just goes <laughs> on and on what this list is and um a lot of people would make the natural assumption that what we would do in our training is to just stop them from doing this stop them from doing that stop the dog from doing the other and ultimately we do want to teach a dog hey you know here are the basic rules of politeness but I'll tell you this, if you start out with a training philosophy of don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other, well, you, you, you jump right into, you, you jump right into being a party pooper because what the, the naughty things that dogs do, they do because they're fun to the dog, right? They don't, they don't know about safety issues. Like if you run across the street, you, that's dangerous. They, they don't know that. So um, we don't start with don't, we start with do. And we give the dog, we teach the dog a whole bunch of positive things. So in, um, in, in the art of training your dog, we give a daily lesson planner. And if you follow it every week for six weeks, you'll be working anywhere, depending on the day in the, in the lesson plan, anywhere from 15 minutes in a day to maybe 40, 45 minutes in a day. Um, you'll be teaching your dog to walk politely on a leash, come when called, sit when asked, lay down when asked, go to bed. And then, you know, stop the nonsense. But the key point is what we teach the dogs to do is, excuse me, I'm talking to you right now. Oh, and then we teach them focus. We, we use treats. Um, we don't use treats as bribery. We use treats as reward. We eventually fade them or make them random. But it's a very elegant system, a very sequential step-by-step -step system that teaches all the basic commands. But Douglas, the, the ultimate goal of our book is to liberate the dog physically so that the dog can run and play, express energy in a, in a focused way, because a dog who can lower its energy level in a, in a fun and rewarding and focused way doesn't give you that much trouble at home, right? Because a tired dog is a good dog. And um, once your dog knows the basics, then we can exercise the dog, and then we then at then at that point, it's fair to tell the dog, yeah, stop eating the socks. You're gonna you're gonna get a surgery if you don't <laughs> knock that off, and uh, that becomes very very simple once once you've worked with the dog to any degree. So dogs really like this system, and and so do the owners. Okay, uh, so what collar would you recommend? Is there a brand, a particular brand? Well, that's a really great question, and I'm going to answer it, but I, I'm also going to say that is a very long and nuanced conversation, much like asking, what is a good brand of shoes, right? 
because that's going to depend a lot on the size of your foot, you know, the nature of your activity level. Okay, so you know, so um, the collar is going to depend on the size of the dog, what you well, want, what your objective is, of, I guess. Yeah, the yeah. size of the dog, the temperament of the dog, the, nat the size of the owner's hands because the remote controls are all different. So I, I will tell you, there are five or six brands that have um, really developed collars that work well within for this kind of a program that you can train a dog with very gently without without hurting or scaring or upsetting them and that's what we're after so we literally put an entire chapter in the book discussing the nuances of all of that because it's such an important question if you go on you, you know some of the online for sale websites that sell general merchandise. And if you put in the, the term e-collar or God forbid shock collar, you're gonna get hundreds if not thousands of responses or results. There's so many options. Um, but oddly of those options, there's only of the thousands available, there's only a, a couple dozen that are decent. So we really wanna help people make a good selection there. Um, we got just about one minute left. Do you want to give us a website that people can come check you out and check out your services? You, you betcha. Um, so uh, theartoftrainingyourdog.com will tell you a whole lot more about this book. And my personal dog training website is chicagodogtrainer.com, chicagodogtrainer.com. Okay, great. Do you rec well, I guess one last question. Do you sure. recommend people bring their dogs in as puppies? The you know, there's about... uh, there's no bad age. I've trained dogs as old as 12 years of age. The, you know, an old dog certainly can learn new tricks. So there's okay. that. And then um, as far as puppies go, I'm doing an awful lot of uh, Zoom. So I, I can help people anywhere really in the world by Zoom. And the reason that I, that I do that, Douglas, is because I think that nine weeks old is a bit early to bring a puppy in for boarding school. Some people do it, but I personally think it's a little bit early. Yet there's so much to know. Has nothing to do with e-collars at that age. We we don't really em start employing e-collars until the puppy is five or six months of age. But if you know how to raise a puppy right, boy, you can get really far. The monks, to summarize, wrote a whole book on that alone, and it's called The Art of Raising a Puppy, and it has everything you need to know about raising a puppy. Super, Mark. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Very enlightening. Uh, best so of luck. Much.